Hello and welcome back. We are in the middle of assembling all the pieces we need to get the random walk metropolis algorithm going. And we have just learned how to sample from the prior distribution. And building on that, let's jump straight back in to continue. The next thing we need is the density of theta. So P theta, let's call that. And theta is now a vector. So we need to be a bit careful, but we said we take the components independent. So I just need to work out what is the density for each component, and then I multiply them. One thing we can use here is we need the density only up to a multiplicative constant, because constants cancel in the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. So we don't need to bother with the constants, for example, the t values we said we take uniformly. And since we take a uniform distribution, we can just assume the density is all constant. The only thing we need to check is we are in the interval and we are increasing, but we don't need to worry about what is the constant, which would be a bit awkward to sort out here. So let's do the first density, the one of the ti. That is, if I ignore the constant, either one or zero. One is if we are in the allowed range. And for the allowed range, again, we must be bigger than minimum t, so that is all ti are bigger than minimum t, and all ti less than maximum of t. And also I want them increasing, so let's multiply that here. All increments of the t are strictly positive. I think that could work. So that just gives the one if we have an allowed value and a zero otherwise. Then Second part of the density, there we need to be a bit careful. That was uniform before we applied the exponential distribution, but after exponentiating, it will no longer be uniform. So we need to think what we actually write here. So we have a uniform distributed random variable on some interval. Let's just write a and b here. And for this, we know the density. So the density of u is 1 over b minus a times the indicator function this interval. And now we also know what x is. x is e to the u. And what we need to work out is what is the density of x. And that is not hard. Namely, we know the density is a function such that the probability of x being in a equals the integral over a f x of little x dx. That's how densities work. So we just need to work out probability like that and write it as an integral. And there is a special thing, instead of a general set A, it's enough to take intervals. So what we can do is we can just do probability of X in some interval. Now I cannot write A, B because that's already used. Let's write C, D. And we need to write that as an integral from C to D now. And whatever is the integrand inside the integral, that will be the density. So let's try that. That we know is probability of E to the U in the interval C, D. Now I take log, so that's the probability of u in the interval from log c to log d. And u, we know the density, it's here. So we know how to write that as an integral. That is integral from log c up to log d of 1 over b minus a indicator function a to b of u, du. And next thing we need to do is we need to turn this into an integral which goes from c to d. So we'll need to use substitution. Before we do that, let me just make one simplification. Namely, here I want to assume that c, d is actual possible values, and the possible values of x we now go from e to the a up to e to the b. And the reason I'm doing this is because outside this interval we know x cannot go because u does not go outside the interval a, b, and therefore outside the density is zero. So outside we don't need to worry. And if we are in this interval, then we will see in a second that this indicator function will go away. Let's keep it for one more step, but you can already guess u is log x, so that will go away. So let's do the substitution formally. So that equals now a substitution rule, we say u equals log x. And then by taking derivatives, we get du is the derivative of log x, so 1 over x dx. And using this substitution, so if u goes from log c to log d, then x 
goes from C to D, 1 over B minus A stays, and then we have indicator function A, B of log X, and DU equals 1 over X dx formally, and that's the result. And now we can do what I just said. If x is in the range from c to d, then log x is in the range from log c to log d. And the range from log c to log d is contained from this in the range from a to b. So we get that this indicator function equals 1. So that comes from here. And that is just a simplification. We could pull that through, but this way the next step gets slightly easier, so let's just copy that over. Here I left out the indicator function because for our C and D that is 1. And then we see that here must be fx of x for all x in, and now the smallest value we are allowed would be e to the a up to e to the b. So that gives us f of x inside the set of allowed values and outside we know it's zero because we are never going smaller e than e to the a and never going larger than e to the b. So we have 1 over b minus a 1 over x for all x in e to the a up to e to the b and zero otherwise. That's right if here. So that's what we need to do in R. Okay, so let's give names to a and b. So let's call this a min, that's what I just called a and a max, that's what I just called b, that we chose 7.1 here. Here goes a min, here goes a max, and then we need, let's first give names to ai and ti. I can copy that from here. And then for one ai, I would just write ai greater or equal to a min, Ah, and I need to be careful, let's rename that. I call that u min and u max, and that's how we generate them. And here I say a min is exponential of u min, and a max is exponential of u max. Now I think I have that all right. I need a i bigger than a min and a i less than a max, and that's vector, so I need all of them to be in, as the result is zero. Then I need to multiply one over a i, and I don't need to bother with the one over b minus a prefactor because that's a constant. So I do product function, it is a function, one over a i. So the product needs to be here because I'm doing the joint density of several of them, and they are independent, so I multiply the individual densities, and the individual densities all have 1 over x in, and if I plug in ai, I have 1 over ai. So I think that may be right, and then I just need to multiply them because the t and the a are also independent, so I can do d1 times d2. We will need to try that out carefully, but let's just see whether p theta is a function, and let's evaluate that with a random theta, just to see whether it works at all. Gives very small values, but that may be okay. Good, so that is the next step. Now we need what's called the likelihood. That is what I called density of x conditioned on theta earlier, so that will be step four. So that's p of x given theta. And that we fixed already, we said, Given theta, the data is meant to be Poisson distributed, and the mean will be given by this function lambda, so that is easy enough. We can just look here. We have already this lambda where we can plug in the theta to get our curve. And so what we need to do is, let's call that likelihood, or lick for short. So that's a function of theta. And that will also depend on the data, but I've stored the data long ago in the global variable daily, so we can just use this in here. So we need to first get the mean of our Poisson distributions. The mean we said was lambda, so lambda something theta. And we need a vector of this, and what I need to plug in here is the times where we have data, so that will be this one. 
Let's just try that out. I think theta is probably still a parameter vector from some earlier experiment. It is. So we can just try whether we can evaluate it like this. That seems to work. And that was the function which is still plotted here. At the end, that is all constant. We have lots of 500s because we just fixed it to be 500 here and there, and then will be 500 in between. So that seems to have worked. There are lots of tens which correspond to this flat stretch. So that is lambda for every day. And then we need to do the poise for Poisson density. And we need to plug in the x values and the lambda. And our x values are called daily. And the lambda we have just worked out. So I think it should be this. And then we get some really small numbers. And what we need to do on top of this is that is for each observation, the likelihood. And since that is probabilities of independent events, we need to multiply these. And now you will see there is a problem. Well, there are two problems. One, I misspelled product. And the second is we get zero. And the reason for this is I expected that would happen, that we are multiplying very small numbers. So remember, this e minus 50 means that is whatever is written here times 10 to the minus 50. That's a small number. And that's here is something times 10 to the minus 7, and here's the 10 to the minus 48, and even worse, here's the 10 to the minus 147. So these numbers, each of them is very small, and now we multiply 262 of them. So that is an extremely small number, and numerically that comes out as zero, it turns out. And that's a common problem, so that's something you need to be aware of. The solution is to do the log likelihood, and I show you how to use this, that will improve things. And the log likelihood, so we need the logs of these. And then the logarithm of the product will be the sum. So that is easy enough. And the logarithm of these, it turns out there is, because that's a common thing in option. So instead of taking the log, I can just here write log equals true. And then it's never exponentiated, and we get the log from the start. So that is minus 85,000. And again, we got zero because e to the minus 85,000 is theoretically different from zero, but numerically not because it's extremely close to zero. So by taking the log likelihood, we have some information here. Then let's just get a new theta. And if I do the sum, then I get minus 120,000, a different number, but we can tell these apart. So that was less likely than that. But if I would take exponentials, we would see no difference in both cases. We would get zero. So it's important for these things to take the log likelihood and to keep the exponentiating as long as possible. OK, so the likelihood was actually rather easy. That's already this done.